Well, first up tonight, we want to take a closer look at a story we first brought you last night. The city of Seattle is considering offering money and some special considerations to minorities who want to open up cannabis shops. Thank you so much for joining us for the News at 6. I'm Matthew Smith. I'm Hannah Kim. 2% of cannabis businesses are minority-owned nationally. Fox 13's Matt Markovich dug a bit deeper into who is eligible to apply for ownership of these shops and found out a few things that might surprise you. Matt. It's not just the city of Seattle, but state lawmakers last year passed legislation in the attempts to make it easier for minority-owned medical marijuana shops that did not go retail to get a pot shop license. But it also made it easier for convicts, for people who are convicted of drug offenses, to get one too. Back in the 60s and 70s, just having one marijuana cigarette could land a person in prison for years. Okay times have changed. We recognize the disproportionality of the war on drugs on the black community. The city of Seattle is now considering offering a potential $1 million in grant money to people who have been convicted of any kind of drug offense to open up their own cannabis shop. It's just one of many criteria. The city will piggyback on rules now being considered by the state's Liquor and Cannabis Board governing 40 specific social equity retail licenses. And they are intended um, to reach people that were disproportionately harmed by the war on drugs. And one of the qualifying criteria, the social equity applicant or a family member of the applicant has been arrested or convicted of a cannabis offense or any other drug-related crime. And the harsher the punishment, the better the odds of getting a pot shop license. You'll get points for as little as just being arrested for a, say, a marijuana conviction, but you would get additional points if you were served time in jail or prison. So you actually earn more points if you had a conviction? It would. If you gain points through this to be able to access a social equity um, license. If it was a fine, it's just 10 points. Serve probation, 20 points. Confined to home detention, 40 points. But serve jail or prison time, it's the maximum possible 80 points, the most for any qualifying criteria. If it's nonviolent and you have proven and paid your debt to society, then you want to make it up, then let's have at it. Says a cannabis industry spokesperson. And we should be helping, um, you know, those that are wanting to turn their life around and say, hey, you know, I want to do this legitimately. But two cannabis chain store owners I spoke with had hesitations, fearing they would be perceived as being against social equity. They wanted to remain anonymous, one saying this will provide licenses to people who aren't equipped to run a business like this. And the other saying this is just a political make good. It is an embarrassment that we are so far behind and we need to step up. And Council member Teresa Mesquite is pushing for the city to pass additional requirements for anyone getting a social equity cannabis license in Seattle. But they could not. Um, stand in the way of the, the criteria that the state has established for issuing those licenses. Mosqueda says it's about sharing the wealth generated when marijuana became legal 10 years ago. And that that wealth can really be shared with the folks who are disproportionately harmed by the war on drugs. And to make up for some of the lost time that we've had over the last 10 years when the equity approach wasn't applied in the first go around. The State Liquor Cannabis Board will be holding a public hearing on its rules September 14th, but next week, a committee of the Seattle City Council could vote on their rules. In Seattle, Matt Markovich, Fox 13 News.